Welcome to the DSTV Roundtable with me, Donovan Goliath. I'm here with Carla McKenzie. I know you from TV, obviously. I know you from radio, but I don't know too much about you. Um, where did this all start, getting into the entertainment and media space? Has that always been your vibe? Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I always tell people that I, I took the old school way and that always means the long way mm -hmm. uh, to, to get into the industry because I started on campus radio. Ah. So I started uh, in campus radio straight after 2010. Um, they had auditions there. You had to go do a voice test and general knowledge test, music test. Um, and then you can start your training of a couple of hours in studio and stuff. So that's where I started. Um, did the drive show uh, in Stellenbosch on campus and then uh, to a commercial station in Cape Town. And then uh, Jack Rande from the radio station in Joba called. And I literally, at the age of 24, I took my 21K bag, 7K hand luggage, and I came to Joburg. And I, I didn't know what other skills I had. I've never been on TV before. I've never done a primetime radio show before, but I knew there was something in the city that I had to go check out, and that's where the journey started. But then, what did you, what did you study? I studied international studies, so economics, political science. Ah. And while I was doing that, I was at the campus radio. So from then on, I thought, no, radio and information and media is, is the way that I was going to go. Because I would think that an easy transition point studying what you studied would mm. be to go into talk radio. Yes, um, that's exactly it. But also, I don't know how old people are here, but I'm also, you know, when your parents when there's a bride at your house, parents are like, you don't talk, you're not gonna, you can't tell it and listen to the, to the yeah. uh, grown-ups talk. Mm. So then I always had to listen, and that also made me understand people. So I always knew that there was something about people that I understood, and obviously then the love for music. Yeah. And I combined those two, and then I went into music radio. And then, like, going forward, is this, is this where you're going to stay? Or are you one of those people who are going to amalgamate into something completely different? So, so this is the thing. Because I went into radio and television because I wanted to learn at the age of 21. I didn't, at the age of 21, 10 years ago, I didn't know there was something like famous and being an influencer and having thousands of followers. So I entered the industry because I wanted to learn more. Mm. And I think that's always just going to be the plan, to learn more in whichever capacity it takes me in. You, you surprised me with something that you said earlier on about having to do a general knowledge and a music test. That exists when you're um, applying to, on, on radio. Yes, I don't know if it exists at a lot of stations, um, but we had, that was part of the training to do a general knowledge test, but they didn't ask you who's the president at the time, but who's the minister of sport. So you kind of had to know the things happening around you because you had to effectively, because it's a campus radio, it's fun, but you also have to, the, you have the ability and the responsibility to inform people. You uh, can't just be there and have fun and groove the whole time yeah. because you have such a big responsibility. So you had to pass that test to be yeah. able to be on radio. Despite having a degree or not a degree, yeah. you have to have world knowledge and understand people to be on radio. Look, that sounds like a lot of pressure. <laughs> if you are thinking of getting into the radio space, uh, we can tell you for free right now that uh, reading a bunch of uh, Chappies rappers with the did you know facts is not going to get you very <laughs> far. Musik Panik, I want to know uh, some of your favorite moments filming this show. I mean, this show has been magical to film, and I think that with it's it's one thing that everybody can relate to, like the power of music in our lives, mm. um, especially like Sims I said earlier. but. Um, one of my favorite moments is usually when we listen to a song, we don't, we're not part of the production process. We, we see it on digital platforms, on the TV. There we have a musician right next to me as the celebrity who explains to you like the process of, of making music, of writing music, of their headspace and stuff. And then you have the four people that is going to compete for that big prize. And they are such a big fan of this person. 
And every single episode, you just get to see what impact music has on people, um, similarly to you, to everyone else. And I mean, it's just the power of music. And then also, because I get to ask music-related questions to these four people, then I also kind of surprise myself of how much I know, or music facts that I know. So mm. I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. That's incredible. Are you a musician yourself? No, oh. not at all. Nothing? <laughs> no. no interest in making music at all? I chose to, to play hockey and do mountain biking. I never picked up a guitar. Man, that's absolutely <laughs> fantastic. And, uh, you know, and, and I like what you said. The thing about music is, you're right, we always hear the end result. Yeah. And sometimes it can sound so simple, but the journey to get there yes. must be such a nightmare. I mean, you can attest to this, I'm yeah. sure, that nobody ever, nobody unpacks that yeah, I mean, enough. You, you listen to a song and it's like, there's so many elements to a song and people don't understand that each element in a song was programmed. Yeah. So that small ting that you hear on a song, <laughs> it's a ting that's alone, you know? Yeah. So people really need to appreciate music much more. That's exactly how I feel. That's exactly. And the thing is, people make music and some musicians make music to make hits and stuff, but in effect, they make you feel emotion. Happy, sad, whichever emotion. You want to groove on a Friday, but it's effective just like bringing out the emotion in you, which is so cool. How has music influenced your life? So music has influenced my life in a, in a big way um, since I was little. So I don't know with many people's families, but my parents, I was the first child. So mm. they would put music on and they go do their own thing and they would play alone. So I would usually listen to uh, You Must A Killer and stuff in the lounge and just pretend that like I'm part of You's band. And then I would take my bike and, and go cycle and listen to You Must A Killer instead of like a pump up, you know, stuff. So music has always been positive for me. And I think it's kind of, it's so cool. And I don't know if it's spiritual, but so that, that I can do a show that's so close to something that's so special to me, mm. you know, that when I am on the show on Via, it's really something that I love. It's really something that is close to me. It's not like I'm just doing a show because they chose me. Yes. You know, it's, it's really personal. So I think, yeah, that's it. So you don't even sing? Nothing. Ah. Nothing. So you can't even try and sing. Like <laughs> no. You can't even hit us with like a small note that Pilani can judge a little bit. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy no that, that Divan actually danced earlier. I'm like, yo, I can't even dance. <laughs> <laughs> And that's, that you know, I like that answer because you unpacked and you got quite deep with it, mm. you know. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Pilani, apart from being um, in the interior space, is also a super talented musician as well. Uh, do you echo that sentiment on how music has influenced your life, for example? Oh, jeez. I mean, that question is like eternal to me. It's mm. like infinite. It's in influenced my life from from the moment, for, since I can remember, you know. Um, I think the most important thing about art is the ability to articulate something you're potentially going through, to articulate something that's happening around you. Um, and so what it does, it, it's therapeutic to yourself first, and then, it, it, and then that energy spreads to everyone else. And funny enough, the other day I realized in the word articulation is the word art. And I think that's what art does. It really helps people express things that they wouldn't necessarily be able to express or see scenes that, you know, they've seen that can heal them, whether you're watching a movie. And I think music is, is, is exactly that. It's healing to us. It's an, it's a, it's an outlet of, of energy, whether good or bad, that people can take from, that they can learn from. You know? Oh man, that's that's absolutely fantastic. You know what I'm gonna do now because what I was trying to lead to is could you sing us out of this particular segment? But you're probably not going to do that. No, I can beat you out. You can sing and you then I'll be like, us. no, 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 too simple. We've Let's done go. this already. I think what we are going to do is we. I'm going to get you to okay. do the outro for this segment. How about that? The way you would do it on your show. Okay. All right. So all the, the only things that you need to include in there is DSTV Roundtable, um, the incredibly handsome Donovan Goliath. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> please do catch uh, your show and all these other great shows. How about that? Okay, cool. See, I'm just passing on work here to somebody else. How would you do it on your show? <laughs> Carla McKenzie, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Thank you so much for watching. What, sorry, is it there? Yes. Right? Okay, cool. Sorry. Thank you so much for watching DSTV Roundtable with the incredible 
sexy Thank you. Donovan <laughs> Goliath. <laughs> Watch my show, Musik Panik, on Via Channel 147 and these incredible people shows as well. And we'll check you soon. Sexy, don't forget sexy. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>